Owe no man anything? What does that even mean? I'm Tim Greenwood, and this is Windows on the Word. Now, where we find this statement is in Romans 13, 8. Now, the full rendering of the King James Version says, Owe no man anything but to love one another, for he that loves another fulfills that law. The NIV version of this scripture says, Love fulfills the law. Let no debt remain outstanding except the continuing debt to love one another. Now, if I had to paraphrase what that means, I would say that we should owe no man anything beyond that which was agreed, but to love one another. For he that loves another fulfills the law of good faith. Now, the King James Version has been construed by some to admonish believers that they should never borrow money for any reason at any time due to the fact that they might owe somebody something. Well, let me ask you a question. If I promised you that before this time next week, I would buy you some specific thing that you want then don't I owe what I promised you from the moment that I promised it? Well, the answer is yes. I owe it to you to keep my word and fulfill that promise, just like I would owe you any money that you might have loaned me. On the other hand, I don't owe it to you in a bad way until the payment or the repayment becomes past due. Now, this very same principle applies to every good faith promise, agreement, appointment, contract, or covenant. Now, the moment you make a promise or an appointment or enter into any kind of agreement or relationship, you owe somebody something. In fact, there are implied obligations in every single good faith relationship of every single kind even if it's as simple as an obligation to love one another enough not to harm the other party or make them less than whole. Look, if God promises you healing, then He owes you that healing from the moment that you accepted His offer and converted it into a contract between you and Him. So is God against us making promises, financial or otherwise? Or is he just against us making promises that we either can't or won't keep? Now, don't get me wrong. Marcia and I are personally debt-free. Our ministry is debt-free. And I suggest that as much as possible that everybody, especially in this economic climate, get out of debt and stay out of debt. Not because of the scripture that we just read, but because of the eighth wonder of the world called compound interest working against us 24-7. Look, putting it simply, this scripture is not advocating being financially debt-free. But what it is saying is to pay what you've agreed to pay according to the terms that you agreed to in your good faith agreement because Good faith works by love, and keeping your word is an act of that love that fulfills both the law of love and the law of good faith. In other words, don't allow any debt to remain outstanding, you know, beyond that which was agreed to in the contract, with the exception of your perpetual contractual obligation to operate in unselfish love towards one another, which is the only way that good faith or a good faith contract of any kind can successfully work. So the real focus of this passage then is not that debt is bad, but rather debt outstanding beyond that which was agreed to. That's what's bad. In other words, it's not about borrowing. It's about keeping your commitment. This scripture is admonishing us to keep our word and to fulfill our part of every good faith relationship 
for failing to do so is a breach or what the King James Bible calls sin against whomever you owe. Being late, not fulfilling, or only partially fulfilling what you've agreed to do is owing somebody in a bad way because it's in breach of that agreement. It's not walking in love and it harms both the relationship, your good name, and your good reputation.